Today, I want to be continuing the discussion that I was having yesterday, which is dealing on the topic of the Holy Spirit. See, yesterday I talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Today's subject, talking about the new creation, the new man, actually has to deal with the Holy Spirit. Now, why do I say that? Well, starting off in 2 Corinthians, it tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, how have old things passed away? How is it that old things have become new? Well, once we got saved... What we ended up doing is we traded our old nature for new nature. Our old sinful nature for Christ's nature. Now where is that new nature coming from? Through the Holy Spirit. See, the Bible tells us... Alright, well... Well, let's get into the thing about the new man first. How are we renewed? Through the Word of God. See, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So, how? So, let's go back to the old other verse real quick. Because you'll see how this ends up actually tying into the Holy Spirit here pretty soon. Kind of removed the bookmarker there. And the dogs hear people outside, so sorry for their barking. Okay, so, as I read earlier. So, Romans chapter 12 tells us, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This is all one will. They're not three distinct wills. And as I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How is everything becoming new? By the renewing of your mind. So we have to renew our minds. How are we renewing our minds? The Bible tells us how to renew our minds. Meditate on the word day and night. Study the word. So by studying the word, finding out why what was said, when it was said, and stuff like that is very important. And how you do that is by studying the word. You go into the original language, you see what the author said in the original language, you read you read things to make sure it's in context, like the whole entire chapter and so on, so that way you know what was said, and then sometimes you even have to go back into the historical things, the culture and stuff, to come up with that. That is called hermeneutics. You're finding out the historical the grammatical, the grammar, which you can do by going into the original language. So the historical, grammatical, and then an exegetes, which means the literal. 
So you go into the grammar, the history, the culture. You go into the grammar, the original language, and also read the verses before and after to make sure things are in context. To come up with the literal interpretation to find out why the author said what they said and why they said it. And by doing this, you are renewing your mind. You also do it by studying the word or meditating on the word of God. Because meditation is what, what you're doing is you're squeezing out of these verses everything that you can get out of them. And how you do that is by the meditation. This is how I meditate on the word, for example. As I said in 1st, 2nd Corinthians, therefore, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How I am doing it is, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then I move on and go, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I do that all the way through the verse until I can get, until I am done to get everything, everything out of it that I can get. And by doing that, you're actually reprogramming your mind. You're renewing it to think in a different way because some sometimes churches say things and quote verses completely off see they can quote the verse right but then they're teaching they're flipping it around getting things all confused to where it is saying things that it isn't really said it, that it doesn't really say so it is good to study like that all right so Moving on to Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11. Now this verse is pretty good because we are not just renewing our minds. We're renewing the spirit behind our minds, which I'll be getting into that. But let's get into Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11. And he, he himself gave us some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Now, this is talking about the five-fold ministry gifts, because they have a very important purpose in us growing up to be who we are in Christ, to be this new man, this new creation in Jesus Christ. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministries, for the edify, for the equipping of the saints for the ministries, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the first thing they are to do is to equip us. To prepare us. Now I now in America we're starting to get these so these drive through churches. And from what I heard that how they operate is you drive up to the window. They open up the window of this drive drive through church. I want to make sure I got the quotes in. And, and when they open up the window, they ask you, So, what are you looking for today? Oh, well, I'm looking to be blessed. Or I'm looking for forgiveness. Or whatever. And what they do is parent from... And I heard some preacher on... Faith USA for their Faith Alive talk about this a few days ago. So they take so, some so-called holy water or whatever, sprinkle it on you, saying, be blessed or you're forgiven, my son. Now, tell me, this drive-through church, how in the world is it doing this? 
equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The next verse. Till we come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to measure of stature for the fullness of Christ. They are edifying. They are not doing the job of the fivefold ministry, which is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to bring them into unity, and to bring them into maturity, which is what this verse is saying. Equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we come into unity, bringing us into unity, for the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, because we are to be growing in to Christ himself. Why? We are the body of Christ. We are we are what he is. We are who he is. And I'm not saying that as blasphemy. I'm saying that because Jesus Christ himself says, As I am, so you are on this earth. We are what Jesus is. And of course we are what he is. We are who he is if we are his body. We are one with him. So we are what he is, who he is, and he is who we are. And what we are, because we are one with him. And these drive-through churches are completely missing that. So, yeah. So, so the fivefold ministry is to equip us, to unify us, and to bring us into the perfect man, to the mature man in Christ, so that we are what and who he is here on this earth. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in the cunning craftiness and the deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. Love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him. We are to grow up in to Christ. Who is the head Christ. So, now I want to make this to where you understand it. The head of Christ... Is the Father. The head of the church, the rest of the body of Christ, is Christ himself. That's why it says the head Christ. Now, some some say even Christ, but in Greek, and I looked this up, it does indeed say the head Christ. So we are Christ here on this earth. We are Jesus's here on this earth. Why? We are to grow up in to him. Now move now skipping over the verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. Now he's correct in the Ephesians, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus Christ that you may put off so he is telling the church you have not so much heard or learned Christ. Why? Because they were being carried about by every wind of doctrine. And he's saying, if you have heard Christ, so he's saying, you need to not just hear about Christ, you need to know him. Have been and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off 
concerning your former conduct, the old man. We are to strip ourselves of the old man, every sinful, every wicked thing. And how are we doing that? Through the fire of the Holy Spirit and by the renewing of our mind through the word, by studying the word. Which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So the old man grows corrupt according to the, its deceitful lust, which is why the Bible tells us, renew our minds. And here we are about ready to get into it again. Verse 23, as I said, we were going to get back into this. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we are not just to renew our minds. We are to renew the spirit of our mind. How are we to do that? Well, we already have the Holy Spirit to guide us, living inside us. And I talked about that yesterday. Once we are saved, we instantly have the Holy Spirit. But then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which brings the power, the over, brings us to overflowing. So, put off the old man. And be renewed in our minds and in the spirit of our minds. That you put on the new man. Take off the old man, put on the new man. Which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And this all comes about by the renewing of our mind through the scriptures, through the studying of the word, the meditating of the word. And of course, the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's going to be hard to do any of this because the Holy Spirit is our co-worker, our co-laborer, and it works with us to do this. So... Colossians. Now in Colossians, we're going to be getting into this whole entire new man thing. We are about ready to dig in deeper. Because God actually had this plan from the foundations of the world. One thing I want to establish here. And this is where... You were about ready to learn that I am carrying on from yesterday's message about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let's get into this. The thing that Saint that the Bible is saying before I get into this verse isn't that if if Satan knew that our sins would be forgiven, they already technically had a system for forgiveness of sin through the sacrifice of animals and stuff. They sin, go to the priest, sacrifice the animals for the atonement of the sins. Now, technically, it would cover the sin. It wouldn't actually erase the sin, which Jesus' blood ended up doing. But Satan wasn't afraid of that. Jesus actually said, hey, look, I'm about ready to be crucified in all this. And Peter said, no, this will never happen to you. And he said, get behind me, Satan, for you think as a man, you think in the ways of men, but not in the ways of God. So Satan heard Jesus say, hey, look, I'm about ready to forgive sins and all that. And Satan's like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, this will never happen. This will never happen because I dealt with... Because he's thinking, I dealt with Adam back in the garden and brought sin in the world with a sinless man. Certainly I can bring it back. But he wasn't counting on one thing. The Holy Spirit, one third of the Godhead, coming and living inside of us. So... Right here, the Apostle Paul is starting the talk. Now I rejoice in my suffering for you and fill, fill up my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of the body, which is the church, 
of which I became a minister according to the stewardship of God, which was given to me for your for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from the ages from generation, but now has been made revealed to his saints. So there was a mystery that was hidden. What is the mystery? To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The very mystery is Jesus Christ in us. The hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in the wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So what was the mystery? There was a mystery that ended up being revealed. We are now, we can now know this mystery. So anybody that's teaching that there is a mystery hidden? No. The Bible tells us there was a mystery that was revealed. And that mystery is Christ in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Chapter 2, verse 8. Which none of the rulers... Now this is... All right, let's go up to verse 7. Now this is what I was covering earlier. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of, uh, of our glory. So now, it, once again, we are getting back into the mystery. God ordained a mystery from the foundations of the earth. Okay, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they had known... They would have not crucified the Lord of glory. And we already got in earlier. The mystery was Christ in us. The Holy Spirit in us. But was written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who he loved. So this mystery, no, I heard it. Or no, <laughs> no, I heard it. <laughs> No, I seen it, no ear heard of it. But God has revealed them to us. So now these things that were hidden has been revealed to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So this Holy Spirit is searching the deep things of God. He is in us, Christ in us. For what, man, for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So the only way for us to know the things of God is by having the spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit lives within us. Except the Spirit of God. Now we have re now we have received not the Spirit of the Word. World not the Spirit of the Word. Uh, blah, blah. We do have the Spirit of the Word. The Spirit of the Word is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I meant the Spirit of the World. But the Spirit So now we have not received the Spirit of the World. But the Spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, 
So you cannot understand anything of God without the Spirit of God alive in you. And this is exactly all that this passage is saying. These things are being revealed to us. Why? We have the Holy Spirit. The very thing that was hidden, the Spirit of God in us. The Spirit of Christ in us. We have the Spirit of Christ. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So why do we have the mind of Christ? Because the Spirit of Christ is in us. So so you can't be going around talking about yourself. Well, I don't understand this. Well, I don't understand that. Oh, I have bad memory. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. No, you have the mind of Christ. If you have the, the mind of Christ, you are brilliant. You are a genius. You know everything there is to know. Well, no, I don't. Yes, you do. You just don't know that you do. Your spirit man knows everything. Why? You have the mind of Christ in you. Why? Because you are in Christ. Christ is in you. You are one with him. You are, when you were born again, what ended up happening is you were, went from being, you became a new creation, a new man, a brand new person. When you were born again, you were born into Christ. And what you are in the process of doing now is learning all these things that you have in him. And once you find out how, how to use them all, that's when you are a perfect man. That is when you are a matured man. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Moving on to First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 before I get into these two things because they are technically saying the same thing. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you Forgive me for that. Somebody keeps trying to call. This is the devil being stupid by trying to send people trying to call me while doing a broadcast. So, just ignore that. I will, one day, the devil will get the point that when I declare something, I mean that it is done. That when I pray to God, to the point that he answers, that means that it is done. And devil, you are... The Bible declares you are crushed under my feet, so you better shut up and knock it off with those annoying phone calls while I'm broadcasting. So let's get into that. Verse 20. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So, right here, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The church building, we... Declare is the house of God. Why do we declare that? Well, that's where believers go to gather. See, the church, the church is not a building. It is a body of believers. The body of believers are the temple, the real house of the Holy Spirit. The building is just a place where we go and meet. And the reason that we do that is because 
we are to be in fellowship. But we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So right here we get the Holy Spirit is in us. He dwells in us. Which is what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 and then over in verse 19 of chapter 6 is declaring the same exact thing. We are the temple. We are the house. We are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And this is all that the this new creation, the new man is. It's that the Holy Spirit is alive in us. And because of that, we have the Spirit alive because we have the Spirit alive in us. The very Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and He will quicken our mortal body. Quicken means startle. So, once we grab a hold of this, once we grab a hold of this new man that we are. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in us. Because the Spirit of Christ is in us. And that we, as His body, are who He is. What He is. That as He is in heaven, so are we on this earth. Nothing will be impossible. The devil don't want you to know this. Why? Because once you grab a hold of this, you realize, huh. So when the Bible declares nothing is impossible, it means it because I am Jesus on this earth. See, the reason that this says that which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Why? Because if the devil knew that the Spirit would come into us and transform us, make us into who Jesus is, because we are tightly united with him, we are one with him, and he one with us, as he is one with the Father us also making us one with the Father. If he had known that, he would have never crucified Christ. Why? He would have just let Christ carry on with his ministry, heal the sick, do all that, not did anything, and just let him live his life doing that because then he only had one Jesus to deal with. But what? But by crucifying him and the Spirit coming and dwelling in us, not just washing our sins away. He now has multiple Jesuses to deal with. And by doing that, the dummy defeated himself. That is why that scripture says that. And that is why the devil don't want you to get a hold of the new man. And man, you got to study these letters of Paul. Romans all the way down through the others. Study them as I told you. I am studying them. One, the historical, grammatical exegetes. Breaking down the history, the grammar, the original language, all that. Studying it right out. And on top of that, meditating on it. Going over it word by word, as I said. And as I gave you the example that I'm doing, why? Because by doing it, renews your mind. And you will grab a hold of all these things that we have. And all the things that Jesus accomplished for us. That we have. That we can't access it. Thus grow mature. Grow up in the Christ. Without doing that. And once we grab a hold. And once we find out what they are, we can begin to start working on them, begin to start using them. One of the things that I said as I was rebuking the devil for trying to interrupt this broadcast. One of the things I found out, the Bible says Saint, Saint, that God will crush Satan, not under Jesus' feet. 
Not under his own feet, but under the church's feet. Now, there is a lot here that deals with the new man, and I actually encourage you to go under John G. Lake Ministries and buy the new man seminar. And go through that and begin to start studying it. Why? Because when I studied it, it's where I learned this and it's where things just began to make sense. And I, I, it's what got me really into studying this myself. And the church needs to know this. Because if we are exact growing up in the Christ, as the scripture says, and the spirit of God is in us, and no! here the church, <laughs> enough. And if the church is ha having their boat whooped by the devil, well, since when did God or Jesus have his boat whooped by the devil? That don't make sense. If we're the body of Christ and we are who he is, how are we to be whooped by the devil? No, we have authority over the devil. Jesus said, I have given you all power, all authority over the devil. And if you have all power and all authority, how much power does Satan have? If I were to bake a cake, or bake, let, let's not go with the cake. If I were to bake a pie, Cut the pie in four slices. Hand the pie over to you. Say, here, this pie is yours. This whole entire pie is yours. The, all the pie is yours. How much pie is left for me? None. So if we have all power and all authority over the devil, which being in Christ, in Christ in us, Thus, being a new creature, creature, a new creation, and that verse actually means a whole new being in the original language. It's what, how you interpret it as. It's how they actually wrote it out. So if you get that, The devil is as good as whooped. Healing people, no problem. And all that. Why? Because when you are laying your hands on people to heal them or speaking your words to heal them, it is Christ speaking that through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Makes everything a whole lot more simpler, a whole lot easier to operate. So I want you to go and study that for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Study it. Get to know it. Find out all these things because once you do, everything becomes that simple. And maybe you are watching. You're like, oh... Well, isn't that interesting? But you find yourself in a backslidden condition? Or you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I encourage you right now. In order, the, the first step towards this new creation, this new man, all starts with you becoming born again. And it starts with realizing, one, our righteousness is as filthy rakes. Two, it is not done by our works. And three, it is only done through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, in the book of Romans, it tells us, and I actually like reading this portion. That if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For, uh, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And skipping down to verse 13, For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, the Bible also says this. God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That means every single person burning in hell, God never wanted them there. Every single person going to hell and is on their way to hell, God doesn't want them there. No, he is wants them to come unto repentance. God never made hell for people. He never meant for anybody to get sent to the lake of fire at the final judgment. That was only for the devil and his demons when they decided to try to dethrone him. But Satan, he's like, huh, well, I fell there. But those people right there are the apple of God's eye. Let's put God in a position where he has no choice but to condemn his own image to eternal damnation. To where he has to destroy the very thing he loves most. God doesn't want that for you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants you to come unto repentance. And it all starts with a very simple prayer. Just calling out to him. All you have to do is pray the simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. For I know that I sinned against you. Wash me what is snow. Make me brand new. Make me into this brand new creation. This brand new man. That is filled with your spirit. And it is. That will grow. Into maturity. Of growing up. Into Jesus Christ himself. Because your word declares. Once I am born again. I am the body of him. He's the head. I am the body. So just let me be washed. Let me be forgiven. For I declare right now, I am being born again as your son, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Father God, for anyone that prayed that prayer, right now I pray the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire over them. Be filled in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that prayer, there are two, two things I want you to do. One, go to revivaltoday.com, click on the Just Got Say button, fill out that information. They will send you a Bible and material to where you don't just start the race, you finish the race. The second thing I want you to do, get connected to a Bible-believing, Spirit-filled church. And stay away from those drive through churches. They are stupid. They are not even close to doing the work of God. <laughs> I can't believe how stupid that is. I mean, I'd I'd rather go back to the old 
old-fashioned days to where you you could spend your whole entire day at church. Maybe your whole entire week, except for going to work. You go to work, get out, head straight back to church. Pretty much just live at church. I mean, it's how they did it in the days of old. And that's why they had the spirit of fire and had things like Azusa Street revivals and other types of revivals throughout history. All right, so getting back to it. Get connected to a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. If you don't have one in your area, I encourage you to get connected to his tabernacle family church. You can watch us on our live stream broadcast at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Tuesday nights for Rock Solid Faith, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if you're in the area, be there. It's the best church in the area. And of course, they can even help you find a good Bible-believing, spirit-filled church in your area if you have one. If not, as I said, you can live stream us. Make sure that you get connected and grow in your faith. And then you yourself, in that very area where you are, once you grow up into the maturity, can actually start one yourself with the help of Pastor Spencer and the others. I mean, they love helping people start churches. We just helped somebody in Canada actually start a church. I believe it's in Canada. So that goes to show you, we help people start churches. I believe we've, we even helped start one in Mexico recently. So yeah, get connected and you, who, who knows, God could actually use you to start a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church in your area if there isn't one. But of course, if you do have one, be there the anointing, the power of God. Well, yeah, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is always stronger in corporate worship. And I can actually say that based on experience from a time where I, from a couple times, I actually had to live stream for a little bit until I could actually get back to the building. And man, it's so much more powerful in corporate worship. And of course, I also found out it is more powerful the more people that you have, which is why it is always good to be in a church that is growing. If the church is not growing, it's a dead church. Things that are alive tend to grow. If you like small churches, well, then you better go start going when it first gets started and don't get comfortable because it will grow. And of course, if you don't like big churches and don't like a growing church, there's something wrong with you that you don't have the heart of God because God loves, loves bringing people into his kingdom. And God wills that none should perish but for all to come to repentance. So thank you for watching this broadcast. Make sure that you can get in and study the word. Grow in maturity to grow up into Christ. Thanks for watching once again. See you next time. Oh, and by the way, I'm thinking next time I want to get, which which I believe will be tomorrow, get into and use, of course, my pastor's Rock Solid Faith book to get into the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, we started on the Holy Spirit. This kind of... This new man went with the Holy Spirit, and tomorrow we're going to get into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So thanks for watching, and by the way, once you are matured, you should be able to easily move in the gifts, because as what I learned from the new man seminar, and, and of course, the thing about tongues is the gifts are like training wheels. 
in our burst of power. But God wants to bring you to a point where you can easily move in it and not use the use the burst of power because you are matured and can just easily move in any of these things. All nine realms of the gifts of the spirit. Very easily. Why? Because you no longer need the training wheels, the burst of power. You can easily move into it. So once again, thanks for watching.